Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so you are uh, comfortable with Angular, right? So we can start with Angular. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Correct. Uh, I can. We can start with Angular. Okay. Uh, can you please uh, briefly explain uh, about the Angular lifecycle hooks? Uh, yeah. So in Angular, when, when we create a component, uh, so we uh, Angular actually runs into a lifecycle hook. So it starts with ng on changes, and then we have ng on in it, ng to check, uh, ng after content in it, ng after content checked, ng after view in it, ng after view checked, and ng on destroy. Okay. Uh, can you please uh, explain a, in bit detail about the lifecycle hooks? Why, uh, how, uh, and when this uh, lifecycle hooks gets created? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. So ng on changes. Uh, uh, it gets triggered when we create a component. When we create a component, uh, ng on uh, ng on changes gets triggered when if there are any input bound properties. We use input bound properties for a parent and a child. So when we have that uh, input bound properties for detecting uh, those changes when the value is set to that input and when uh, it is getting altered. So all those changes will get triggered uh, in the ng on changes. And after post the input bound properties are getting that values are getting reflected or initialized, we have the ng on chain ng on init. In the ng on init, all the initialization and all the API call and everything uh, can be called over here. So here the component has been created. So all the initialization logic will be get into the ng on init. Then we have the ng to check. So this uh, lifecycle hook is primarily intended. Uh, intended to uh, make uh, sure that all the uh, changes that Angular itself uh, cannot detect. So all those uh, changes that can be, which Angular is not able to detect, so those logics can be incorporated in the ng to check. And this runs uh, once after uh, ng on in it, and then for every change detection, this uh, lifecycle hooks runs. Then we have the ng after content in it. We have uh, in Angular we have like an, an content projection. Uh, 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 pattern is the or uh, method is the so we can actually project an HTML content in uh, child component from the parent so that all those uh, content initial after the content projection so this content initialization we can actually uh, create uh, uh, get the methods and also the those logics can be written in the ng after content in it and once the content is initialized then we can have the ng after content check so this also after every content initialization it actually for every change detection in the content so this uh, particular lifecycle hooks called and after every ng to check also this uh, ng after content check gets called then we have the ng after view in it so uh, after the content has been projected then we have the view so the view has to be uh, there is a view child properties in angular so we can actually reference to the template and we can uh, have that interaction so those logics will be written within the ng after view in it and similar to ng after content check, we have this ng after view check. So these are the lifecycle hooks. Then we have the ng on destroy. Like if we are actually moving away from this particular component to another component, then we will be called this ng on destroy will be triggered. And basically all the subscriptions and all those things, logics that we have written over the, in the uh, component. So those uh, that will be unsubscribed in the ng on destroy so that we can actually prevent the uh, memory, memory leakage. So that is regarding the NG, uh, Angular lifecycle hooks. Okay, it's great. Okay, so if we are in the component, we do not have any uh, input property, input bound property, then uh, do the ng on changes uh, even get triggered? No, uh, no, no. Uh, so uh, once we are having this ng uh, uh, on changes, so that gets triggered only when there is an input bound property. If there are no input bound properties in that particular component, then uh, there is no uh, that ng on changes will not be triggered. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I am sure about that. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, so we have a constructor, right? A constructor in a component. We are a, a constructor. We are actually writing. So what is that for? What what are things that goes inside a constructor? Uh, yeah. So in, in constructor, actually, uh, we will be write, We will be injecting one in a, in a particular uh, component. Uh, so we will be. We have so many dependencies like uh, other services. We need to call the API. So that is that logic will be written within the services. So all those uh, logic uh, regarding the services and also the, we need to inject the dependent. Okay, uh, so you have your code open over here, right? 
So can you please show me how you will be creating a uh, service through Angular CLI? Okay. So basically, the command that I would be using is uh, G G S S test service. Okay. Yeah, this is the command that I would be using uh, for generating the service and G uh, for G for uh, generate and S for service and service name. Okay, so once you create this particular service, uh, what is the decorator? Like in this uh, screen, you are uh, showing the add component decorator, right? So would that be the same with service? Uh, okay, yeah, no, no. Uh, so uh, that service would be uh, in, uh, decorated with add injectable. Um, so we angular core is actually providing this uh, at injectable decorator for injecting uh, this particular service so we have like uh, so what we are primarily doing is by decorating a class with an injectable so we can make sure that uh, this is uh, part to be this is a service that needs to be injected into the angular okay great okay so now so this is provided by angular core okay uh, yeah got it got it so now uh, so what how this particular service this test service how can you actually take into within this uh, this app component is depending on this particular test service so how will you inject within this particular service okay so one thing we can do is we can actually go into app module and uh, in app module we will be having a uh, provider okay we have a provider array so here we can provide a test service so it can service okay test service so here the, uh, this so it would be available over here and in the constructor in the constructor uh, what we will do is we will be creating injecting that test service okay, and we can if the test service is having <coughs> sorry uh, yeah no problem yeah so if the test service is having one particular method so okay yeah got it got it yeah good uh, so this test service so in net injectable you are actually providing uh, there is a provided in uh, feature right so that is not being implemented over here so what is that for uh, yeah so yeah I've got it yeah. so here we have a provided in property so if it is like a root so that means uh, this is available throughout our application from the root uh, module okay so so this is one feature and if I am actually having uh, one particular value over here Probably, so I am having a test variable. So, trying to console that uh, test service dot test so I can access over here and the value should be populated okay yeah so once I am providing that in the root module uh, I can actually remove it from here okay still it should run fine because I have provided it in the uh, root module okay so if I remove this particular value, if I commented it out, there is an error uh, provided in is not assignable to so if I remove this so there is an injector, no provider so in that case we need to provide that in the um, ng module so this will work fine that is the uh, use of angular service okay great okay that is great so 
now that uh, with that actually we are uh, okay so you are good with the uh, angular services right so okay that is great uh, how we have uh, shown that case of provided in okay now uh, so you mentioned about ng content uh, content projection in the angular life cycle hook so in the content life cycle hook uh, there, there is a concept of uh, multi slot and uh, single slot have you heard about that uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I have heard about that. Uh, so in content projection, uh, we can actually uh, project uh, content uh, from the parent to the child that from a single source or from the uh, multi-source. So if you want uh, to project it from multi-source, then we will be decorating that with the select attribute. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Uh, so can you please explain me how you will be uh, as you have the code opened, right? So how you will be actually writing? I don't want uh, uh, the exact thing, but uh, how you will be writing that as a syntax, if you can provide that, it would be great. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. So here we can actually go with, uh, so we'll be, in the child, uh, we'll be uh, having this particular selector. And so in the parent, actually, uh, we'll be calling that particular component selector we'll be having. Uh, so this is the component selector. So if it is, uh, then we'll be calling that. And within that, we can actually project that content. Okay. This is for single source. If I have multi-source, then uh, what I will do is ng content. Mm. And, that. and inside this ng content, there is a select attribute. Uh, so here I will be providing like uh, first content to be projected. So this way I can make sure that uh, this particular content will be getting projected. So that is the use of content projection as uh, so a multi-source. Okay, good. That is what I was expecting. Uh, okay, so as we discussed earlier, so for the next sessions in JavaScript, uh, CSS and HTML, we will cover in the next uh, interview session. So be prepared for that. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot for your time. It was great uh, talking with you.